Abbiamo 100.000 mani, ma noi vogliamo essere un'anima sola. One life, just one. Don't waste it, spend it well. This is what's beautiful about being young. At 20, you can choose your own future or imagine it to be different or try to change it. There are young people like this on every continent, idealistic and concrete and open to others. They speak a thousand languages, but they are just one soul and they just have one dream to unite the world. They are young people, but teenagers and children followed them after a while, half a million. They started out in 1967 with a name destined to make history. Gen, new generation. They wanted to change themselves in order to change the world like those their age who occupied universities and marched in the streets during those years of protest. Let's unite, they said to young people. Faithful to the gospel, they dreamt of a peaceful revolution in which love was the only weapon. They were following a leader, a woman, Chiara Lubic, the Focolari movement's foundress. I was in the mountains at night time, and coming down a road, I saw the sky that was spectacular, full of stars. Looking up, I saw the Milky Way with many, many stars. I understood within, it was the Lord who let me understand, that a second generation would be born. You were that generation, and in a sense it would never end, because who can count the stars in the Milky Way? Therefore, my impression is this, and that day the Lord let me understand this, that there would be a new Milky Way with young people that would continue to bring everyone to God. It's true, and that's how you are. Is it the way? From adults to youth, the transfer of the role of witness was marked by a symbolic gesture, the handing out of a trophy. It became their flag with two sides. One was the plan to be achieved, that all may be one. The other was the secret for success in this undertaking. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A newspaper was established to keep them all connected. They started getting together in little groups, the gen units, the laboratories to encourage one another to live each moment of the day well. Studies and prayer, sports and getting together with the others. Their life was not boring, on the contrary, it was very colorful. A little daily revolution which they called rainbow. Here then is the revolution that we need to begin under this aspect. Under the aspect of communion, sharing our goods with everyone, sharing our goods with the poor. It's something extraordinary that will give glory to God. It's something marvelous. There was no time to lose. We needed to roll up our sleeves and get to work. But where should we start? It was obvious, with Africa, it was the most ravaged continent. So it had to become the privileged continent. Beginning in 1969, the Gen worked to bring aid to Cameroon. With their contribution, a hospital rose up, a high school and other institutions around the city of Fontem. Later on, they also worked for Asia and to bring justice to those suffering injustice. A qualitative leap forward in 1973. 8,000 young people came for the first Gen Fest in history. It was held in Lopiano near Florence and it brought the great rock concerts to mind. Here at the Paula Air Sports Stadium, where last week we witnessed conflicts between people of different races, rehearsals for the Gen Fest are taking place. The road has been paved. There's no turning back. Two years later, March the 1st, 1975, the Pala Ure was filled. The following day, Paul VI was blessing 20,000 young people who arrived in Rome. Dear young people, coming from different parts of the world and who call themselves Gen, New generation, it's a beautiful and moving sight. A new world is being born, 
a Christian world of faith and charity. The youth have decided to have the Gen Fest every five years. Now it has become a regular worldwide event. The globe was still divided into two blocks on May the 17th, 1980, East and West. Un saluto. Greetings from all the Gen and the youth from all over the world who are part of the new generation. In the middle of the Cold War, 40,000 young people invaded Rome's Flaminio Stadium. On that day, they showed with their own presence that a united world was a dream that can be achieved. We are not talking about a dream. The Gen had to deal with history. They bore witness to peace in the midst of the civil war between Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland. Yes to you, I want to find you. Yes to you, yesterday. No longer a revolution for a few, but for everyone. The movement, Youth for a United World, was born in the Sports Palace that year, 1985. Chiara Lubich had already talked about it to the Gen two years earlier. It was challenging, perhaps the most challenging of all. We had to go out into the open. At this point, the ideal was being shouted from the rooftops. And that is what happened in 1990. The Gen came back to Rome to write a piece of history. A world in rapid change was represented in the Sports Palace on March 31st. The Berlin Wall had been knocked down a few months earlier, and many of the 16,000 young people came from the East for the first time. There to welcome them was a man who had contributed to this change in the course of history, the one who had given a push to the wall, John Paul II. <laughs> A slight figure crossed the stage that day. Approaching the man in white was a Buddhist Jen who knelt at his feet. It was a sign of the times, a prophecy. Special greetings to all the television viewers who are connected with us today and those who are connected via satellite. The earth had become a global village by now. The mass media had shortened the distances, reaching everywhere. And so the Gen spoke about their life to the world in 1995, using satellites and television. Their celebration traveled over the internet for the first time. The message came through loud and clear. The media exposure amplified it. It didn't water it down. It has always had the same radicalness, the same as at the beginning. This was confirmed when the Gen Fest became an event at the World Youth Day in 2000. 20 years has passed since that first time at the Flaminio Stadium. Many Gen had found their way to heaven during those 20 years. Alberto and Carlo, Maria Ursula, Daniela and Santa, young people who had aimed at sanctity with conviction. Among them was Chiara Luce, who died from an incurable disease at 18 years of age. I departed from your lives in an instant. I would have wanted to stop the running train, which was bringing me further and further away. Another world was waiting for me. I could not but abandon myself to it. Now I feel immersed in a splendid plan, which little by little is being revealed to me. Jen, young people, don't be satisfied with the crumbs. You only have one life. Aim high. Don't be satisfied with the little joys. Look for the fullness of joy. If you live this ideal, you will inherit the fullness of joy. This is my wish for all of you.